Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Now, with the uh, pesticide ban in Ontario, it includes both fungicides, insecticides, and herbicides, so that there's a very limited amount of of those products that we can actually use. So it means that roses that in the old days we would be able to spray for insects, diseases, etc., were available. Well, now they're not really available. There's still a few that you will probably find still on the market, but it makes it difficult to use in certain things, such as fungicides where the heat is too high. Well, we spray in summertime, right? So on roses. So in roses, it has meant that the breeders have have been required to sort of start and breed for basically disease and insect resistance as well as beauty, fragrance, etc. But we also need roses that will do well in our particular climates. So one of the things that have has happened is that the roses and most of the roses that are bred for this type of conditions are actually bred in Europe and they are ADR roses. If a rose has an ADR designation, then what happens is the rose itself has been tested throughout Europe in different gardens with no special care for insects, diseases, and even food, water, and other care. In other words, a low-maintenance rose that performs well in the garden. So if you see uh, the designation ADR rose, that rose in itself will need to be considered one of the roses that you want to put into your garden. There are others, and they are being tested, but many of them are still coming out of breeding programs, and they are new. So, you're going to look at them, and you're going to go, oh, okay, how do I know which ones? Well, first of all, you're going to have to like the rose. So, if you don't like the rose, you don't like the color, you don't like the shape, then you're not going to buy it. You're not going to really enjoy it, so don't buy it. But if it has a high rating and it meets the criteria of it fits the space and the rose can get at least a full day's sun, because all of them still do need that, then these are roses that you should consider. Now, roses are grown and are performed and rated by their region where they are going to be grown. So, in other words, certain roses will do better in California than they would in the Northeast or in the South, etc. So, what you have to do is you have to find the roses that are growing successfully here. The newest garden for this is actually at the Royal Botanical Gardens in Hamilton. And you got to go to their rose garden because this is exactly how it's planted. The new rose garden has only opened this year, and it is well worth taking in only if you want to start making a list of roses that they've put in that they are going to also continue to test. Now, here's a few that are you're going to find should do well in this climate. Then they are new, they are old, and they are all different kinds. So we've got Brothers Grimm, Cinderella, Crimson Milan, uh, Knockout, Cosmos, Laressa, Oh So Easy Cherry Pie, Peach Drift, Poseidon, which is one of my favorites. My wife loves that one. Purple Rain, Rosanna, Ruby Lace, Therese Bugnut, and Thrive Lemon, Topolina, 
and wedding bells. Now these are all great roses that you can grow in this area, the northeast of the United States and in our area. So for example, if you're farther north and you're in zones three, four, and five, you may want to consider these ones, particularly if you're in zone three or four, here's a few roses that you can try. Cape Diamond, Carefree Beauty, Centennial, Flirt 2011, John Davis, Lady Elsie May, Lena, Lupo, Marcy's Pride, My Girl, Ole, Also Happy Petite Pink, Quietness, Stanwell Perpetual, Sweet Fragrance, Teresa Bugnet, uh, Winter Circle, Yellow Brick Road, and Yellow Submarine. These should do well in those plant zones. In other words, Zone 3 and 4. And that means they're hardy. It doesn't mean you're going to like them. It doesn't mean they're going to be the size for your garden. So what you want to do is also go through and see if this rose appeals to you. Does it have the size that you want? If you're tucking them in, then it's important that you realize that it's going to need to be a certain size. And they are all different sizes, and you're going to have to research this. So just because you happen to like a certain rose, you may not have the space for it. And there are roses in this disease-resistant category which grow in containers. Now, these have been tested to grow in containers. That usually means that we're going to be putting them into a large container. You're going to mix in a few other flowers and annuals or even perennials with it. You may have to sink them in your area, the whole pot, every winter and lift in the spring. But there is quite a few that can be done in containers. Remember, you are going to have to make sure that the size of the rose is equal to the container and the space. Here they are. Coral Drift, Cream Veranda, Crimson Milan, David Rockefeller's Golden Sparrow, Domamiti, Doucher, Easy Does It, First Crush, Flirt 2010, Flower Carpet Amber, Jane Bullock, Julia Child, Q Gardens, Cosmos, Lady Elsie May, La Marine, La Rasa, uh, Marie Daly, Mary Louise Marjan, uh, Miracle on the Hudson, the Oh So Easy Cherry Pie, Oh So Easy Petite Pink, Out of Rosenheim, Peach Drift, Pink Drift, Pink Martini, I kind of like that one right there, Pink Pet, Purple Rain, Raspberry Kiss, Ooh, I like that, Republic of Texas, Romer's Hip Happy, Rosenstadt Freelings, Roxy, Ruby Ice, Solero, Spice, Sweet Bigarosa, uh, The Fairy, which is probably one of the most growing roses and one of the best roses ever produced for anywhere in the world, Thrive, and Tupelo Honey. Those can go into containers. Now, if you get a really good book or etc., you're going to find, they're going to give you a listing, they're going to give you pictures, but they're also going to give you ratings. And they're going to give you ratings based on a few different things. First of all, they're going to go and take a rose that they know is going to do well, and they've done the testing, but they're also going to then rate it as whether or not it's the best. Now, we're going to go and I'm going to tell you that you want roses that are rated in the high 80s 
90s up to 100. Now, this means that you want a rose that blooms profusely, and that means that it's got 21 to 30 rating. These are points. Disease resistance is also important, and you want a disease-resistant rose that is in the 55 to 60 range. If it's fragrance, fragrance you want, but it can be anywhere from 3 for a very mild fragrance to 7 to 10 for a strong fragrance, right? Now, so... Overall, you take the three and you add them up and you want a total on the ratings between 80 to 100. Though I would prefer you to pick roses that are rated at about 89 to at least 95. And what you'll find is that these are the best roses going. Now, just because they're disease resistant and they're nice roses, it doesn't mean that you're going to like them or you'll like the shape, etc. Or that it's going to be high enough rated for you to grow. So you can get roses that are disease resistant, look beautiful, etc. But their total may be as low as 60. So... Here's a couple that you might want to consider. These are all in the 80s uh, in their total rating. Belinda's Dream, Beverly at 85. The Black Forest Rose is 83. And the Blush Nosette is 89. Okay, so remember what I said. 89 and up is what you should be looking for. If you're looking for, remember we talked about hardy roses for the very far north and Cape Diamond was one of the ones? Well, it only has a rating of 84. Are you going to turn it down? Not if it goes into your climate and does well and you like the shape, color, and size. Because it is a medium, medium tall, strong spreading habit. It is hardy to about zone 3 to 4, so you may want to try that one if you're way up there, okay? The Brothers Grimm was another one, and it's got a rating of 85, but it's upright, it's bushy to 5 feet. It's got brilliant orange and gold reverses. Uh, you're going to like the plant. Its fragrance is only one, Okay? What did I say? Where if you take a look at Cape Diamond, the fragrance is seven. So you got a nice fragrant rose. And it goes through. So you want a really good book that does all of this and then goes and tells you how to look after them. What I found with a lot of the roses that are more disease resistant, etc., is that they do have to be deadheaded. And most of the time... I was taught when I went to school, you prune the rose back to the first full set of uh, leaflets. In other words, if a rose full set was five, seven, or or nine, that's the first one you you come to working down the stems where you cut. And that's not necessarily true anymore. What they're doing is they're finding, particularly with these roses, that you want to cut back to the same diameter stem as the diameter of the stem where they were blooming. So if it's a stem that's a quarter of an inch across, you want to prune back down to a leaflet, just like you would always do, where the stem is at least the quarter of an inch in diameter. If it's half an inch, then you want to cut back to that point. As a result, you want to go and make sure that you do this because you will get better reblooming quicker. Also, you'll find that when you're planting these, they don't like wet feet. Roses don't. They like good, rich, organic, well-drained soil, and they like it moist. 
Don't overfeed them because overfed plants are susceptible to predatory insects. Don't go and spray if you don't have to and pick out the roses that you do truly like. Sometimes it's good to go out, take a look at what's in other people's gardens, people who've had success, and at the same time, go see the Hamilton Botanical Garden's new rose garden because it is really quite good. It's new, but every year from now on, you're going to know they're going to keep up. And if a rose does not do well, it'll be replaced with another one for being tested. They're also doing companion plantings. These are plants that do well with roses and, of course, attract the predator or parasite insects that go after the insects that attack your roses. I'm Bruce Zimmerman. This is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.